Coming up on The Good Life, see how you can be a part of the annual It's For The Kids 5K, benefiting the Central Florida Children's Home. Hiram Bustamante, director of the Children's Home, and his wife, Carrie, will join us. Learn how you can make a difference in a child's life. That's coming up right now on The Good Life. I'm Ken Michael. Hi, and I'm Barbara Beck. Thank you so much for joining us. Those of you that join us every day that live here in Central Florida, welcome back. And don't want to forget the visitors staying out at Disney Resort hotels up and down the coast. Hey, we're getting into that season now where it's bike week and <laughs> race week and right. soon to be spring break. And oh, so more and more people are invading or you know, blessing us here in Central I Florida. I like that. <laughs> they are blessing us. It gets to be a very busy time of year. But we're blessed by you joining us today and making that decision. We don't feel like it's a mistake that you've joined us today. Those of you who are faithful, who tune in every single day, That's Ken, right. we see them on the streets. You come up to us and you tell us how grateful you are for TV 45. Well, believe me, we we are grateful that we have this kind of programming and opportunities to offer you because this is a place where you can come every day where it is safe programming, inspiring programming, educational programming, and, and we're going to have a program today that you're going to be blessed by. That's right. And one thing about uh, Good Life 45, since we started 30 years ago, um, we love kids. We love children. We do, kids. And that's part of our programming content here on TV 45. Kids and family. And on that's today's right. program, we are glad to welcome back again Hiram Bustamante, who is the director of the Central Florida Children's Home and his beautiful wife, Carrie. The Children's Home will host their annual 5K run and walk on March 2nd. Welcome back, Hiram. And this is Carrie's first time with us. Yes. Welcome, Carrie. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Glad to have you both with us today. You know, we uh, have been a part of uh, what you've been doing for many, many years there. Uh, Clyde Green started the home how many years ago? Uh, actually, we're celebrating our 40th year this year. Yes. Mm. So we're very excited about that. But you know, Ken, I want to, before we start um, talking a little bit about the 5K and, and about the home, I, I really do want to thank the both of you for the years of support that you have given the home. Thank you so much. It is very gracious of you. And, and I know God uh, looks down upon us um, many times when, when we do things like this. And uh, I, I know it makes him very happy that we as Christians come together to help these children within our community. Oh, so I'm, I'm, we're very excited that you continue to support us. Well, it's and, a joy, and thank right? You so much it's, for that. it's our blessing it to be a, a part thank of you. it because these, these kids really do need the help of the community uh, because these children, T tell us about the children, first of all. How many have gone through the program over the years? You know, we, we've had several children. Um, at times, we had, we've had as many as 24 children at times. Um, you know, we usually range somewhere between 15 to 22 children is normally the, the number that we have there at the home. Um, and, and, and they come and go. Uh, some have actually, though, been there for quite a, quite a few years. We've had some that came to us when they were four years old, and this year they're graduating from high school, and we are so excited for them. Yeah. Uh, they, these are children that uh, have grown within the home, and, and they're looking forward to going to college, making something of themselves, serving the Lord, and, and coming back and being able to contribute back to our community. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited about that. And these children are, are typically from ho homes where the parents just for one reason or another cannot take care of them. And your goal is to get them back with their families. And, and, that, and that's correct. Our goal is to hopefully get those children back, back with mom and dad so that mom and dad can actually raise those children. And uh, one of the things that we do at the home is we actually take all the siblings. Uh, we don't like to split up the siblings. So at times uh, we may have uh, some some of the children may be five, six, seven, and we may have an 18-year-old or 17-year-old or 15-year-old coming with them. Uh, but our goal is to keep them together so at the very least, if mom and dad cannot be there, that they can still have their, their family together as children and be able to grow together. And hopefully it will be an easier transition if they're able to go back to mom and dad. And you're, Hiram, modeling what it's like to have a home with loving family and a loving set of parents. Because basically, you are their substitute parents until they can be reintroduced into their families. I think our viewers would be interested, Carrie, to know that you actually go grocery shopping for this big brood of children with Hiram, and you take all the kids with you. How oh, yeah. important 
important is that to help them understand some of the skills that are involved in putting in having a family? Well, just imagine when you're going to the grocery store, there are so many skills involved and you might receive the education in school, but when you put it into practice, that's when it really becomes a part of you. And it helps prepare them for what's going on, going to come to them later in life. They go to the grocery store, they need to use math, they need to read the package, they need to think about what they're doing. And when they take it home, they take ownership of what they've, they've mm -hmm. helped us purchase. And so they're usually, oftentimes, more eager to actually eat the food, even if it's healthy for them. Are you a tough mom at the grocery store? Do you say no, 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 or do you just let them pile on anything they want? <laughs> well, we try to do a little bit in between. Uh, we know we appreciate being able to have treats in our lives, and we know sure. the kids do too. At the same time, there needs to be structure to what we do and to what we choose when we go to the grocery store. So we talk about what's healthy for you. Does this food help keep you from getting sick? Does this food, is it junk food? And how to put balance in their lives, even with the things that they eat. I bet that's tough, though. Yeah. Real it, tough. it is. Sometimes they, they want to go for the candy and the Slurpees. <laughs> but you know, you know, you give them a little bit, and then you, you, we want to direct them back to that's what's good great, for them Carrie. as well. I remember my wife and I were out to visit you just a few days ago, and we hadn't been in the home for many years. You've made a lot of changes over the last few years. Uh, we, tell us we, about we, some of them. We have, um, and, and, I, and I've got to tell you, Ken, it's, uh, it was a pleasure meeting your wife, and uh, I just felt like, like I've known her for years, you know, just <laughs> the, com the way the conversation just took off when she got to the home, and uh, we've, we've had a lot of changes at the home. We've done a lot of remodeling at the home. You can imagine the home was built back in 1973, uh, when when all this was started and uh, since then there's been very few remodelings done to it or man, many changes or much change done to it but um, we've gone through and, and we've been blessed by the Lord he sent some folks our way uh, some developers and contractors that were willing to give their time and money uh, to help redo the home and we've done the girls hallway we've done the bathroom uh, that's done they're now in the process of doing the boys hallway and the bathroom they've painted both uh, and, you know, we were thinking, well, you know, that's it. It's going to stop there. But, you know, they've come to us and say, what about the rest of the house? What do you want to do with the rest of the house? And, and Carrie and I sort of look at each other and go, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you think about, you know. You, you know, it's got to be God. And we know it's got to be God because we're going, okay, that's going to cost. <laughs> right. Well, they, they, they sleep in the bedroom, so the kids do. And, of course, those are have been redone for the most part. Hallways have been redone, but... There's all, all those bathrooms. Yes, there are a <laughs> lot of bathrooms. <laughs> And, and, we, and we do have quite a few of those. So, but it, it's it's just it's it's been a blessing. It's been marvelous. You you know some of the things that happen sometimes you just can't explain it. Yeah. You, there's just no explanation. How how did that person just show up, knock on our front door, and say? We want to help, mm -hmm. and they just they just do that. And well, God has a special place in His heart. It's a mandate in Scripture to take care of widows and children, and in particular, we're wondering what causes a family to be in a position where they can no longer care for their children. What sort of circumstances get the child out of the biological home into the Central Florida Children's Home? You know, Barbara, as, as, as you well know, times are very difficult right yes. now, and uh, especially the, the economy, financially, and things like that. Um, it could be something as simple as both parents losing their jobs. And now uh, mm -hmm. they may have been parents that live from paycheck to paycheck, and they realize that they still have to provide for their children. And, and, and that could be the only thing right there, just that, a, a financial situation that, that, that burns the family. Um, and it could happen to any of us. Sure. They're I mean, not bad parents. No. Yeah. They, that, it does not necessarily right. mean that they're bad, bad exactly. parents. It's just something that happened in their life uh, that maybe they were not expecting, and it did happen. Mm -hmm. um, and we're there as a home to help them and help those children. And then we try to encourage them to maybe uh, go back and go back to school, get their lives going again, and then bring their children back in back into their lives. Now during that time, uh, we also encourage them to come to church with us. We go to church every Sunday. We invite the parents to come to church with us. Uh, we take them to uh, uh, teen activities on Wednesday nights, and we invite the parents to come with us then. Where, um, where do you all go to church? Where do you take we them? We go to Eastland Baptist, okay. and that's where we take the children And that's to. where they go to school. You're not, yeah. Carrie, you're not homeschooling this brood, right? No, not all of them, no. <laughs> they are in, on a scholarship to the, the Christian school there, and it's, it's been great. They get a lot mm. of uh, personal attention, the, the quality of education. and it, it is great. Yeah, it is. Uh, what about homework? When they come home from school, what, what happens then? Uh, well, they have homework. And even when they don't have homework, they spend time reading every day. And the thing is, is that oftentimes these children come from backgrounds where they've been moved around a lot or they haven't been able to really 
put a lot of time into their education. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times they come into the home, they may be below grade level. And so by having them uh, in the Christian school, getting that education that they need, then they come home and they can receive more support. It, well, it's they have structure them. because yes. you're a former school teacher. So yes. you know what it's like when they come from school and they come home, what would their day be like? Would they go for a snack first and then you sit them down and have them do homework? But what, what's the routine, Carrie? Definitely. We have some space dedicated for homework and for projects. And so that there's not a reason to leave that project till the last night. Oh, they have great. a place where they can work on that. They also come home, they do their snack, they have their homework, but we have uh, a lot of resources available in the home and it's just really great because sometimes the older kids will go in and you find them reading children's books that are younger but there's topics in there there's poetry there's things that generate conversation and it just it really promotes uh, or it becomes a normal part of their life to talk about things that are interesting and that's what really nurtures their desire to learn more. Yeah. Well, as we were tra touring the home the other day I mean that that center part I call it the heart of the home, right there in the center, was the area where they do go in and do their homework. Mm -hmm. Now, it used to be everybody did their homework on tables. Yeah. But now, in the computer world, there's computers in there that the kids can go in and actually go on the internet yes. and do their homework from there. Is that right? Yes, it is. And it's great because um, what we saw going on before, and you know, part of it's the change of the times. The way homework is and the resources available is different than when most of us were growing up. They come into the home and they have a place where if the project, they have three weeks to do the project, before the choice was pick it up and get it out of the way every <laughs> night because the meal time is coming, or wait till the last night. And that kind of defeats the purpose of a project and that is time management as well as learning the materials that you, the topic that you're given. Mm -hmm. So the great thing about having that space dedicated is they can come in, they can work on a little at a time, they can delve into it and learn more than perhaps they would have if they'd waited till the last What minute. a blessing, Carrie, to have a former school teacher, Hiram, you must love this, to be mm -hmm. able to encourage these children in their education because schooling is such a big part of making making sure that these kids come out of the home and are successful in life. Yes. It really does prepare them for their future. Yes. It also allows them the opportunity to help their families when they grow up mm -hmm. rather than repeat the difficulties that they're, that they're going through. That's right. Yeah. We're going to take a short break, but when we return, we're going to be talking more about the ministry of the Central Florida Children's Home, so stay with us. Welcome back, viewers, to The Good Life. If you're just joining us, our special guest today is Hiram Bustamante, director of the Central Florida Children's Home, and his lovely wife, Carrie, former school teacher. I still can't get over how blessed those children are to have both of you as a couple and as family. You, Hiram, are a former what? <laughs> well, I, I still am. I'm a uh, local law enforcement, actually. That's big. <laughs> that is, do you ever have to um, <laughs> do a little law enforcing at the home? <laughs> I don't. I don't. But but, um, but the children, they, they love the fact that I am a uh, law enforcement officer. They get to see all the things that I do, and they're always asking me questions. How did it go at work today? Yeah, and I bet what they happened? Love that. Uh, the little ones, especially the little ones, did, did you catch a bad guy today? <laughs> <laughs> what do they call you? Um, well, they're at the home. Um, they can either call me uh, Mr. Bustamante, and uh, the little ones, it's kind of funny how it's all started, but uh, they like to call me Poppy. Oh, and uh, my boys, when we first started with the home, they were there and they'd, you know, poppy this, poppy that. And uh, uh, we had a two-year-old that started calling me poppy. Oh. And then all the other little girls started calling me poppy. <laughs> and, you know, so it, it, it kind of stuck. Now. Melts your heart, so it doesn't does, it? does, it does. Oh, yes. But the nice part about it, you've got a sheriff's deputy car sitting out in the front, yeah. too. Uh, we do, we do. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, but what you can do, I mean, you're teaching these kids, too, these children, how to live in a society that follows the rules, mm -hmm. the laws, mm -hmm. because you can give them practical, practical experience of what happens when they don't follow the rules and the laws. Absolutely, and, and you know, one of the things is I've, I've been involved with the uh, children's program that, that, the, uh, that we teach in law enforcement, and so I've, I've been able to bring a lot of those skills with me mm -hmm. into the home mm -hmm. and, uh, and teach the children, um, especially what happens when, when you get involved with situations like drugs, yes. um, 
how to, when you make bad decisions, how those things impact you. Um, but you know, we, we always we always go back to the Word of God, yes. and um, we always reference the, the the Bible with the children and and what God says that He wants us to do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's it's, that's very important in our home. And what you're doing, Hiram, it sounds like to me, is you're balancing structure and discipline with love. And so they're coming out of an environment or into an environment where they really understand the love of God. And that gives them the possibility of true success in life. Let's talk about the 5K that's coming up. Walk and run. I love that. We don't all want to run, but we can no. all walk. <laughs> Tell us about the You event. know, it's a, and it's kind of funny because the uh, what normally what happens is Carrie uh, comes comes up at the tail end with all the children because uh -huh. some of the children are so little that they can't run, but they want to participate, mm -hmm. and um, and they really enjoy not only participating. We have a children's run as well. It's a one mile children's run, run that we do, but the little ones want to be part of what the grown ups do as sure. well. Mm -hmm. So usually that's what Carrie does. She gets them all together, and right at the very end, that she walks with all the children and, and kind of brings everybody up at the tail end. But um, it's uh, coming up on March second. It's a very exciting event for us. It's going to happen out there at the uh, beautiful campus uh, that Campus Crusade has right there on Moss Park Road. Um, I don't know if you've ever had the opportunity to visit them out there, but um, it's they have a beautiful lake, uh, just a beautiful piece of property. Uh, we have a lot of the uh, local businesses that will be participating. Uh, uh, great opportunity for you to come and, and learn what's out there on la in Lake Nona, uh, what some of the businesses that have up and come since uh, since that area has been developing out there. Um, I know earlier, Ken, we were talking a little bit about when when the 5K started, how hardly nobody was out there, That's right, and you so really bad. didn't have to worry too much about the stop signs or the cars. What you worried about was the alligators. Where are they at? Right. <laughs> used to be on Moss Park Road out there, and uh, when there was not much out there, but now the the good part of it is at the Campus Crusade site, it is all enclosed in that. Area. It is, and it makes it really safe, safe. Uh, not only for, for the runners, but also for the children that come out and participate. That's right. One of the neat things about the run, too, is that there are so many people that get involved. Churches bring out their children in, in buses. People come out in their, of course, their personal vehicles, but it's a whole community event also. Absolutely. And, um, you know, what's exciting about it also, you can create your own teams. For example, if you're, if you're uh, part of a church, and would like to create a team for your church, then all the members of your church could actually register onto that team, and you could all either run together or walk together as a team. So if you're part of a uh, organization or part of a, of a company, you can also register that way. Um, it's, and it's really simple. All they have to do is go to the website, uh, cfch5k.net, uh, just click on there and it gives really easy instructions how to set it all up. Uh, it even tracks uh, any fundraising that you're doing for the event, tracks all that for you, um, all the folks that are part of your team and so forth. And of course all the funds that are raised stay directly with the home too. They don't go to anybody else. Absolutely. A hundred percent of the, of, the, uh, of the funds come right back to the home and those dollars are used to uh, help the ministry there at the home. Now, do you have? Do you need volunteers to come out and help with this? We do, and if you'd like to be a volunteer and come out and participate uh, from that aspect, then you can actually go also to the website, and there's a volunteer section. You can register, and we'll have our volunteer coordinator for that event contact you and uh, share with you how you can help. Because not everybody can run or walk, and maybe That's they correct. have a, a conflict on that day. But everybody can pray for the event, and people can also participate by maybe giving or volunteering. Uh, uh, well, just by praying is just a wonderful thing. Hiram, I wonder what these children think that are in the home when they see the community come and support them in such a monumental way. Does that speak to the children? It does. It, and, you know, and they and we actually talk about that and uh, how folks in the community actually want them to be successful in life and how much of a concern they are to those to other individuals within the community. Um, and, and, and they really, you know, they, they really see that and, and the children feel that and we have discussions with them. Now something else that Carrie and I do with the children is we also show them how to give. Yeah, and um, right. not only receive, but give. Mm -hmm. So this past Christmas, we actually um, allowed the children to uh, go out and purchase a, a, uh, a gift that they would give to someone in the community. Wow. And uh, we actually did that. Good then for you. the other thing that we did with the children is we, we took a hat and we put all the children's names in a hat and they got to draw a name. Um, and then we took them and they were able to also purchase a gift to give to that other child within the mm -hmm. home. 
Mm -hmm. uh, they really enjoy doing that. They, because we've got to believe that Scripture is right when it says it's more blessed to give than to receive. And they are recipients of a lot of blessings. But for them to be able to give back, then they understand that principle. That's brilliant on your part. Very wise. Uh, absolutely. And you know, something else that we've done with the children is, for example, um, we've taught them that it's really important to help, for example, missionaries around the world. So mm -hmm. one of the things that um, when we first got to the home, they, 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 we taught them how, how important that is to God's work and how important it is to give back to God. You know, think about it. God allows us to keep most of what we do and what we make. Yeah. He only asks us to help him a little bit mm -hmm. and help his work move forward. And um, you know that's really that's really important, mm -hmm. and um, so now the children actually ask us for mission money. Can oh, Ms. Bustamante or Ms. Bustamante, can I have this? I'm, we're going to have we have this program going on in Sunday school. I want to be able to help, and you know, which is really nice. I, I enjoy when I, when I hear that. I know that they are really uh, getting it. Getting they're, it. Understanding they're understanding. They're understanding what's happening. Music has been a real important part of the home through the years. Don't you have a piano, and don't some of the children take lessons of some sort? Yeah. We, we do, and we have a small music center at the home. Good. Um, and a lot of times the children will get together with them. I play the guitar. Um, I think, Carrie, the flute is... Um, used to. Uh, used yeah. to play the flute. <laughs> she hasn't for many years. But, uh, but we're, we're very inclined, and even our own children. Um, we, one of our ch children plays seven instruments. Wow. So, so in, our, in our lives, uh, music is very important as yes. well. So we spend some time, we let them beat on the drums Good. and play the guitar and, 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 and do some things with them in that area so as well. So they're not really lacking anything other than eventually getting back into a, hopefully, a functional home at some point, their, their own biological home. In the meantime, they're getting so much from you, Hiram and Carrie. Bustamante. We just thank you for your heart, yes. your passion to love these children, to provide for these children, and to give them the kind of structure and love that God has appointed you to do. Thank That's you. Right. Thank, thank you. you. For that. And we encourage you to go out and see the home because it is on Narcusi Road right off the 417, and it's just a, a pleasure to go out there and see. It's a beautiful piece of property, by the way. It has a lakefront <laughs> even. <laughs> And, but you can go out and see, over the years, the Pool Builders Association has given them a pool. You go in this huge food area <laughs> where people have donated food, brought food, paper supplies. Think about your children. What do they need? Now multiply that times 14 or 16. They all have those needs right mm -hmm. there at the children's home. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to get more information, we encourage you to, to go out and visit them. The phone number is 407, call first, by the way, 407-277-7441. Again, it's just south of the 417 on Narcusi Road. And, Barbara, they can also go to the website. Yes, that website is cfchildrenshome.org to get more information. And there'll be pictures up there. And, Ken, the one thing that I love about Hiram and Carrie, you have always said, come and visit. This is an open home. They have nothing to hide. Everything is out there for everybody to inspect and to see. And so we know that your heart is pure and your motivation is great. And this is something that we need to be praying for and supporting. So go to that website to get more information. It's for the kids. 5K Run and Walk on Saturday, March 2nd at 8 a.m. Again, it's at the Campus Crusade headquarters. Bring your children. You know, Ken, we always talk about community service That's hours right. for our own children and grandchildren. This would be a great way for them to get some community service hours. And by the way, hey, if you have some bikes you're not using any longer, they always are in need of bicycle and mm -hmm. bicycles and parts mm -hmm. off of bicycles. So drop, drop them off by the, the headquarters too. Right. Um, now, again, the... Uh, Run itself is at the Campus Crusade headquarters, 100 Lake Heart Drive, Orlando, Saturday, March 2nd at 8 a.m. Get out there while it's nice and cool in the morning and bring the bikes, bring the kids' bikes. Well, you could probably rollerblade, run, walk, however you can get around. And also get sponsors to help with the children's home, too. Mm -hmm. If you can get someone to sponsor you for so much a lap or I guess it's a lap around right. the Campus Crusade. That would be a wonderful thing to do so to right. help bless these children. Yes, that's right. Thank you again for being here with us today. And viewers, we have prayer requests now. Thank you for writing in to us. Bertha writes, please remember me in prayer in the loss of my husband in December. Now, I, I can so identify with you. I lost my dad two years ago this month, and it is still very painful, and it is something that I personally will never get over. And I think when you lose someone that you love so much, we know that they are in a better place. But 
that sometimes doesn't help us as the grieving person left behind. So we will absolutely pray for you in the loss of your husband that God would bring you great peace and um, just patience going through that grieving process. Also, a knowledge reviewer writes, please pray for God's will and a new job transfer. We'll be praying for that also. And uh, also, let's continue to pray for the children's home. Let's pray okay. for all those involved, the house parents that are here today, the directors. And also they have a, uh, by the way, they have a, uh, you have a missions area up on 1792 or a, a, um, a thrift store. Thrift store. And you can go there and the funds collected there for items in the thrift store go directly to the children's yes. home. So be a part in some way, whatever, however God leads you. Father, we do pray for Hiram and Carrie as they continue to lead out with these children, precious children that uh, are yours. Father, when we look into their faces and see the joy that uh, they have received through love and care, but also knowing the love of Jesus Christ in their own lives. Father, we just thank you for these children. Mm -hmm. We ask that you bless them. Unite them back with their parents eventually. We just thank you in the meantime that you've allowed this home to take so good care of so many children over the years. Now bless them. Bless the leadership. Bless all those who participate in this run and walk. May they all have safe journeys through Campus Crusade. I just thank you, Lord, for every person that's going to be involved. Those who run, those who walk, those who rollerblade, however they get around. Also the volunteers and all those who continue to support the home. And Father, we just pray for every person out there that's watching today. Whatever their need is today, if they need a new job, I just pray for a better job than they had before. Those that are, are needing new homes, I just pray for a better home than they had before. And our heart goes out particularly to those that are convalescing at home or in a hospital or in a nursing home. Father, for our senior adults that are out there today, we pray for each and every one. Father, bless the children, bless the seniors, bless everyone that's watching today. And for those visiting here, we ask that you give them a great day today too. Thank you, Father, for all that you've done. Now bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. And viewers, we'd love for you to write in your prayer request. We want you to feel good about that. We want you to feel good about calling us here at this station. And we want to encourage you today with a final scripture to, that comes from 1 John 3, verse 18, which says, Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. What a great mandate and scripture that is for us yeah, today, right. Ken. And as Hiram is shared today, just be giving, giving to the children's home. We need your support here at TV45. Continue nicely to thank you for all that you've done in our lives. Our address will be up on the screen and the children's home num number two. Don't forget that and give them a call. Bless these children, Father, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. We thank you for every person that's watching and God bless you. Have a great day today.